should be. But a lot of trouble is caused by paid agitators and other. A footnote, I would also wish that UK would take greater responsibility for the hooliganism that occurs after UK came so taxpayers don't have to pay for that twice since we fund UK. Thank you very much. Next is Billy Mallory, and I think you had wanted to yield your time, correct? So uh, that time goes to Rock Daniels. You're next, and you'll have six minutes. Is Welcome. Benjamin Rock Daniels, 11th District. Um, you know, in your, in your meeting this morning, we said that, you know, our nation as a whole has gotten less safe. However, in 2018, when many of you were first elected, our city was the third safest city in America. So if the whole country got less safe, then we would still be the third safest city in America. However, now we are ranked number 15 in the country for murder rate. I think it all stems to the fact that we have not properly funded different areas of our government. Our corrections officers are 118 officers short, four of them sergeants, one major. Our sworn police officers are 115 officers short. Now these are the sworn police officers, the ones that can actually do work in our community. And we said, you know, we heard the chief say today that we as a community need to appreciate our officers. Well, I remember as a kid with my stepfather who owned a chain of dry cleaners, every Christmas he gave out hams. And one day I was there and I heard one of the employees say, well, heck, if he really appreciated us, he'd give us a check. And that's what we need to do. I've seen the numbers. I've seen how much all of these other communities are paying their police officers. You know, and we can sit back and we can say, well, we had our collective bargaining and we closed it and then they uh, had theirs and it was unfair. But you know what? I own a construction company. And pre-COVID, I was paying construction workers $20 an hour. And then post-COVID, everything changed. And people were paying these same construction workers $30 an hour. And I had to pay mine $35. I wasn't making any more money, but I had to pay them more money because that's what the market required. I know a lot of you don't own businesses. I know a lot of you, you know, don't have a lot of business experience or business acumen, but that is what it takes. You have to pay people the amount of money that they are worth. And our safety, it's worth a lot of money to a lot of people. And the fact that we have canceled two public safety committee meetings and didn't have a meeting in July because you were on break, that says a lot too. Our emergency 911 is almost half staffed. I've talked to people who just retired from there out of my community, and literally we are half staffed. There are times there is only one person taking 911 calls. And like Ellinger said, thank God there was a police officer there to put a tourniquet on that person. How liable is our city going to be if someone is on hold with 911 for five minutes while someone dies in the street? How much money is that going to cost us? How much money is that lawsuit going to cost us? You know, my hat is off to these guys, and I appreciate everything they are doing, but they are short-staffed. And this, we as a city have been like a ship. We've been like the Titanic heading for an iceberg, and you guys have known about it. You knew that in 2018, we were 63 officers short back then, and nothing was done about it. We need to stand up for public safety in our community. The other thing is, I've heard several times, nothing good happens after midnight. And that right there, we are a city of over 300,000 people. We have a nightlife. We've got Keeneland coming up. We've got the Breeders' Cup coming to town. So are we gonna shut down at 11.59? Or are we gonna stay, we're gonna keep our bars open, our nightlife open. We've got people that work second and third shift at UK. You know, a couple weeks ago, I came home after midnight with my wife and kids from a concert in Cincinnati. We drove home after midnight. What if we were in a car wreck 
and somebody was dealing, 911 call was dealing with uh, a gun violence uh, in downtown and couldn't pick up the phone to come save my family. It's ridiculous, guys. 911 needs to be a priority now. Like, this doesn't need to be something that we talk about down the road or put in committee or anything. This needs to be something that we take an issue now. We sit here until midnight if we have to. Because this is the safety of our community, guys. Come on. This is, these are wives and kids in our community. And they're going to die because of the decisions you guys make. So I beg you. I mean, I'm literally begging you. It's in... <laughs> you got to stand up and do something for this community. We can plan to plan to make a plan, which has been the Lexington way for years. Or we can stand up and say, we're going to make a difference. We're going to implement something. We're going to move forward as a city. We're going to get back to the point where we were when most of you guys got elected for the first time. Thank you. Thank you. That ends our list of public commenters. So next is I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Councilmember Baxter moves, Vice Mayor Case seconds. All those in favor say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you very much. If you smell what the rock is cooking.